This show was sponsored by BetterHelp. The lights are off, everything's quiet, you're ready to sleep, but your racing thoughts are keeping you awake. Sound familiar? If your thoughts won't give you a rest, it might be time to talk through them in therapy. Visit betterhelp.com super to give it a try. Hey, brother! Goodness gracious, you guys, what a momentous week for a couple of reasons. Number one, the sag after strike is finally over! And with that has come an onslaught of major projects in the fandom pipeline, all of which I'm so excited about. But bar none, the one I think I am the most excited about is Inside Out 2, which just dropped its first teaser trailer. And with it, we get not just one, not two, not three, but four new emotions being added to Riley's mind. We've got anxiety, envy, embarrassment, and ennui. A word I was definitely not pronouncing ennui for a while there. Ennui. And it should be no surprise that there are new emotions. I mean, when Riley was born, we saw joy get there and then sadness, and over time, more joined the crew. So it's only fitting that as she enters puberty, we get all sorts of chaos. What's puberty? I love how when the little jelly beans show up, it's just a demo day. They don't install anything new, they just break everything and are like, all right, have fun, you're a mess now. But the big question I had after watching the trailer was, if new emotions are added as you get older, then why in Inside Out did we not see anxiety or jealousy or any of the others inside of mom and dad's head? Like, are the new emotions just the reflection of this particular period of life for Riley? Are they just the emotional counterparts to that all too familiar, but gratefully very, very, very far behind us puberty button? <laughs> Personally, I'm now entering the, oh, I slept funny on that, so I guess now I'm injured phase of life. Can you see that popping? I'm just more of a crackle. But we have seen inside mom and dad's minds, and to be fair, they have morphed a little bit. For example, their emotions have all grown to reflect their outer appearance as well. Mom has the long hair and the glasses. Dad has that glorious mustache. Something I've strongly been considering for myself. What do you think? Go for it? There's also an obvious lead emotion in each mind, anger for dad and sadness for mom. And notably with each decision, all of the emotions are involved and seated, creating the appearance of a more rooted mind rather than a more chaotic one. But more important for today's video is what we don't see inside of mom and dad's minds, and that's any of the new emotions. Where do they go? Are mom and dad just incapable of feeling these things? Are you telling me that there are parents out there without anxiety? Well, today we find out. Please let it be the case. Pixar Theory, the Pixar Theory. We're finally going to see clearly the Pixar Theory. Okay, so first things first, me, Jay, and parents still have anxiety. So like, what do Pixar? Are you telling me that at some point by the time my kids are 11, I'm not gonna have it anymore? Cause can't wait. And also not for nothing in the first Inside Out, dad just moved his entire family across the country to San Francisco, like the most expensive place ever to join a startup, which is commanding all of his attention. Plus they lost his moving truck along the way and his daughter ran away. So if you're telling me that dad wasn't feeling anxiety in the first movie, I don't believe you. And yet, it's not present in his head. Where is he, Dad? Where is he? And look, yes, I know that the real reason they're not there is because they weren't planning on making a second movie, but the fact that they are means they are going to retroactively have to address this in the second one, okay? And by all accounts, it might be the actual plot of the movie. So, one particularly interesting thing to note about anxiety is the color they chose for it orange. Which stands out because if you go back to Inside Out 1, there was always the question of Bing Bong's flower petal on his vest. It included a color of each of the regular five emotions, but then also a sixth one, orange. It always felt like there must have been an emotion left out or one that we didn't know about yet. And if you go back and look at some of the early interviews for Inside Out 1, the writer said that they considered up to 27 different emotions that could have lived in Riley's mind before they whittled it down to the core five. But some of the other emotions that they considered that ultimately weren't used were surprise, trust, and pride. And yet, interestingly, none of those are represented in our four new emotions, at least not yet, but more on that in a minute. Either way, the final flower petal has been filled in and orange represents anxiety who arrives with all sorts of suitcases better known as emotional baggage been there Anxiety is not alone though, and will be joined by three other key members of the team who at the moment we don't have like the full character models for, but you can see some of their heads if you look at the poster for Inside Out 2. And from there you can pretty easily deduce which emotion is which because you can just match the color of them to the font at the end of the teaser. So first we have Envy, the starry-eyed emotion standing underneath sadness. I love the starry eyes, like she just wants everything. 
hiding in their hoodie. Embarrassment is next, standing beneath anger. Then we have anxiety, who we've already talked about. And lastly, we have ennui, standing beneath fear. And if you're unsure about the word ennui as an emotion, don't worry, so was I. It is basically that feeling of wariness and dissatisfaction and is commonly associated with boredom. An emotion I can personally tell you I've been neglecting for years. Oh, look at that. Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey kissed in public. And while I'm super excited to meet all of these characters, my first thought was also, I don't feel like Riley hasn't experienced these emotions before. In the first movie, she was 11 going on 12. And I have to tell you that by the time I was 11, I had been bored at least like five times, if not like five million times. No, but seriously, as we go through Inside Out 1, you see Riley navigate all four of these emotions at one point or another. Probably goes without saying that the drive from Minnesota to San Francisco can be a little bit boring at times. Why don't we just live in this smelly car? We've already been in it forever. Then before her first day of class at a new school, we see her anxiously looking around and all the cool kids and fear rolls up with a whole list of things that could go wrong that day. Or getting called on by the teacher. So as long as none of those happen, we have a new student in class today. Are you kidding me? Out of the gate! Then immediately after that, Riley's telling the class about how she just moved, but then gets really sad and starts crying in front of the entire class. Now this does form a new core memory of sadness, but there's no way she's not also feeling really embarrassed right then. Then to round off the new batch of emotions, there's a scene where Riley is having like a video chat with one of her friends back in Minnesota, and they're talking about how a new kid joined the team and they're doing really well, and Riley gets super mad and feels very jealous and slams the laptop shut. My point is that Riley was clearly capable of experiencing these emotions before they were physically present at HQ, which suggests they already existed somewhere else in her head, but as of puberty, have been moved up to the main console. Who made the console orange? Like I'm imagining maybe they had their own little mini consoles elsewhere, but now they've had to move here. That would also kind of explain why they had to bring bags. Then in the first movie, we also see how Joy was formed and it's not like she had to bring bags. So again, the bag sort of indicates that they were already there just elsewhere. And guys, now we need to take a quick pause to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Factor. Talking a lot about emotions today and I can tell you that all of mine are a lot happier when they're not hungry. You guys ever get that hanger feeling? But the holiday season is coming up, and while they're supposed to be this joyous, festive time of year, they can also keep us awfully busy, and finding time to shop to prepare meals can be pretty tricky. That is why my wife Beth and I love when a box of factor meals just arrives at our door. These are chef prepared, dietitian approved meals that have never been frozen and are ready in wait for it. No, just kidding, you don't have to wait for it because it's just two minutes. In fact, just last night I had myself the shredded chicken taco bowl, and I gotta tell you, on a cold day, really just warms the soul. But the other thing I love about Factor is that they have this like gourmet plus option where you can get these premium ingredients, stuff like leeks or broccolini or truffle butter. And after a long day, having a meal that's not just easy and fast, but also nutritious and made with top grade ingredients is just the light at the end of the tunnel sometimes. Definitely recommend you give it a try. Very fast, very tasty. You can head over to factormeals.com slash super50 and use promo code super50 to get 50% 50% off. One more time, that is promo code SUPER50 at factormeals.com slash SUPER50 for 50% off. That's so much. And now, on with the show. But they also couldn't have just been like wandering around aimlessly like Bing Bong was in the first movie because when Joy and Sadness aren't at HQ and can't touch the console, Riley is like incapable of feeling either Joy or Sadness. I mean, you can literally see in the background here, all she can feel is anger, disgust, and fear. But speaking of joy and sadness not being at HQ, let's talk about that for a second because they go on this great big journey together. And the point of that excursion is like the whole theme of the first movie. Joy is clearly the lead emotion in Riley's mind and sees it as her primary mission to make sure that Riley is feeling happy as often as possible. And we see her go to pretty great lengths to make sure that sadness just stays away from the console as much as possible so that Riley never has to feel even the smallest iota of sadness. But what we, the audience, and more importantly, Joy learn throughout the first movie is that our emotions demand to be felt. And even though it is the antithesis of her very existence, Joy is able to recognize that Riley needs to feel sadness. In fact, sadness is essential for Riley to move on and continue a happy and healthy life. And with that acceptance comes progress. Riley is able to create a brand new core memory of both joy and sadness. 
And I bring all of that up because I think Inside Out 2 might have a very similar approach, but instead of having multifaceted memories at the end, what we'll end up with is multifaceted emotions. And there's a couple of different ways I could see that playing out. And for what it's worth, yes, I have not forgot the original question of why don't Riley's parents have anxiety? We are getting there. Stick with me. I could see it going a couple of different ways, but here's pitch number one. Each of the new emotions seems to be an extension of one of the existing emotions in Riley's mind. Like anxiety seems like a pretty reasonable counterpart to fear, like fear and anxiety is just a very common phrase and grouping of words. Embarrassment seems like an extension of disgust. Either you can be disgusted with yourself or else be on the receiving end of somebody else's disgust. So really there are two sides of the same coin. Then there's envy, which I think you could easily pair with anger. I mean, I'm sure we've all felt those sweet, sweet pangs of jealousy before and just the rage that consumes you afterwards. You could feel sad, and on some level, indeed, you do. But I think anger shows up first with envy. Riley, at the very least, certainly seems angry when she slams the laptop shut. And then there's ennui and sadness, which I think could live comfortably together in the house of melancholy. However, if you just look at the movie poster, there's like a second set of proposed parallels that they might be going for. Sadness over envy, anger over embarrassment, disgust over anxiety, and fear over ennui. Worth noting that all the original emotions are also looking down at the new emotions beneath them. And I can see all those comparisons working out as well, but the idea is really still the same. There's just a counterpart for each existing emotion. So what I think is gonna happen is that throughout the course of the movie, each of our original emotions is gonna have to find a way to cope with one of the new emotions until they just sort of become one. Navigating those waters is just part of growing up and it's all on high alert during puberty, but eventually we all get there and are able to regulate our emotions until they become the original five again. This would explain why mom and dad can still feel those emotions without them having to be so extremely present every second of every day. In fact, if you go back and look at mom and dad's head again, sure enough, the five original are the five left standing, but their memories do look a smidge different than Riley's. In fact, you don't even have to look that closely. They just have varying shades of color and brightness and hues. Meanwhile, back in Riley's head, all of her memories are of a uniform brightness. So in her parents' head, it almost looks like each emotion is capable of more range. And that's because they've already gone through what Riley is about to go through with puberty. They've dealt with all those new emotions that joined them for all those super fun years. <laughs> Raise your hand if your best year of life was eighth grade, okay? Yeah, no one, I didn't think so. So I think by the end of the movie, what we're gonna see is either each of the core emotions having absorbed one of the other ones, or else they're just going to leave and go back from whence they came. But not before they teach each of our main crew a little bit more about themselves and how to control control their powers. But at this point, you've no doubt pointed out that if this is the case, then shouldn't there be five new emotions? If each of them is supposed to have a counterpart, then shouldn't there be a fifth one? One for probably joy? Going back to the poster, four of the emotions are looking down at the new ones. Joy is looking straight at us. So does that mean there could be yet another emotion we're gonna meet? Well, that feels like another video. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Pixar action from us. If you wanna see some more of our inside out theories of which there are many, you can check out this little playlist right here. But otherwise, until next time, I will see you in another Life Brothers.